Hi everyone. Today I want to introduce you an interesting software that I've been invited to try before the open beta phase that it's running right now. It's called Fabricator and it's developed by Vmod. What's interesting about the project is that it leverages a generative AI specifically trained to generate fabric textures to use in PBR materials. We can say it's like a mid-journey of fashion. Here's a disclaimer screen saying that since the software is still in early access, it of course could experience some problems and encouraging testers to give feedback to improve it faster. Okay, let's start. The web UI has two main modes the custom generation and the quick generation. We will focus primarily on the former because it's made of several steps and gives more control to the user. Before generating, note that every texture and PBR maps generation will require some credits. My current credit balance is on the upper right side of the screen and if you use the link in my description, you can create an account and get 1500 free beta credits to try out the software. Okay, here I'm in the custom generation mode and I've selected the use your watch option that lets you upload a picture of a pattern you would like to replicate. For our first test, I'm going to use a Moroccan pattern I found online. If the image is already seamless, you can check the image is seamless box. Mine is not, so I leave it unchecked. When the image is loaded, we can select it. This brings us to the seamless tool where a preview of how the image will tile is displayed. My image is almost seamless, but there are some color shifts. In your case, consider using the box on the left to crop the image to help the software making a better tiling texture. Next, click Make Seamless. The texture now seems to tile better than before, so we can proceed by clicking on Next. Now we are in the upscaling phase, where the AI will enlarge our texture to 1K, 2K or 4K resolution. I'm going with 1K. Ok, the texture is now 1024 by 1024 pixel. Let's proceed to the final step by clicking on Next. Note that until now we didn't use any credit, but to complete the generation process we need 100 credits. Here you just have to select if you want a metallic texture, in my case I'm not going for a metallic look so I choose no. Let's finalize the generation by clicking generate PBR maps. After the final generation we'll end on the visualization screen. At this phase the texture is no more editable but you can preview it on different models and play with various sliders like light intensity, scale, roughness, normal and 8 values. There's also a change color option that works by sampling patches of color from the texture each time you press the add layer button. But if your texture has a lot of colors or gradients, it will be tricky to change the color you want. But probably this will be improved in the future. Remember that these are just visualization settings that are really useful to preview the material with different maps intensity values and colors, but these changes are not applied to the texture you will download. For the second texture, we are going to use the Generate Swatches option of the Custom Generation mode. If you're familiar with other AI tools like Midjourney or Stable Diffusion, you probably already can understand how this works. But if you're not into AI tools, let's break this down. First box is the more important, is the prompt. Here you have to describe what you want the AI to generate. If you have already a clear idea in your mind, try to be as specific as you can. If you want to let the AI be more free, you should be more general in your description. For this example, my prompt is create a texture of a futuristic fabric, high-tech, neon fabric, cyberpunk, highly detailed, 8K, sharp details, high contrast and colors. Negative prompt is exactly what it sounds like. What you write here, we can say that will be disliked by the AI. In fact, it will try to avoid the elements included here. Common words could be distorted, blurred, crinkled, and so on. Fabric type lets you select from a range of predefined fabrics and will help the AI understand better what type of result you want to achieve. I've chosen PVC because I'm trying to get a synthetic plastic look. Next, we have seed image. Here you can upload an image that the model could use as a guide. As you will see, it gives quite good results. 
Finally, the number of outputs indicates how many images are generated at once. I suggest to use 4 or 6 to have the right amount of choice. The model generated something already interesting, but I wanted to show you how to iterate on something that could be a good base. So I'm going to pick this image and click on Reuse as seed image. So the AI will keep it in consideration for the next generation. I'm going to leave all the settings as they are and click Generate Swatches. We got some flashy stuff right here, but I don't like it too much, so it's time to introduce you the prompt weights options. By using this panel, you can tell the AI that some words are more or less important and therefore should be more or less dominant in the generation process. Here I've increased some of them by one and some other by two. When saving the weights, you will notice that the prompt has changed. Those parentheses and plus signs indicate the weights we just set. Let's hit generate again now. Wow, now we got something even more exotic, but I kinda like it. So let's select this pattern and see how it tiles. Well, it's a good start. I'm going to leave the crop tile area on the left as it is and click make seamless. The software seems to have done a good job, but maybe we can achieve something more. Let's resize the tile area a bit and hit make seamless again. Cool, now we got a better tile Let's go to the upscaling step. I'm going with 2K for this one. For the final generation, this time we want a metallic look, so I selected yes on the metallic texture option. Let's play a little with the maps intensity sliders as well with the tiling on the texture. And we can see that the final effect is quite cool and this material could be easily used, for example, on characters on a game with a futuristic setting. The third material workflow is the same as the previous one, so I'm going to show it to you a little more rapidly. My prompt was create a geometric, white and blue, Greek-inspired pattern on linen fabric, with a weight of 2 on Greek-inspired. Negative prompt was distorted, crinkled. For fabric type I choose plain. As before, the first generation didn't fully convince me, but one of the results was a nice base to iterate over. Next, I made it seamless, leaving the tile area full open and upscaled the texture to 1K resolution. Finally, I generated the PBR maps, setting the metallic option to no. The final result is quite good. It could be easily applied to a dress, for example, like the one you see here now. The fourth material is going to be a leopard pattern using the displayed prompt. Fabric type should be, you guess it, fur, and let's go and generate it. One of these results looks exactly like what I wanted, so let's select it. Here I saw that it was already almost styling, but when I made it seamless, some evident striping was showing up, so I decided to move the tile area and try again. This time the tiling looked more organic, so next I upscaled the texture to 4K and let Fabricator generate the PBR maps, setting the metallic option to no. The visualization viewport shows the result. That was quite good, but not really furry. The next material is based on a picture of my own curtains. I've used it as a source image with the displayed prompt and fabric type set to organza. Results look interesting, even if quite different from what I wanted, but that's also what's cool about this tool, it gives you inspiration. In fact, one of these patterns looks cool, so I've chosen it. In the seamless generation phase, I reduced the tile area just a bit, and the resulting tiling was quite good. Next, I've upscaled the texture to 1K, 
and generated the PBR maps, setting the metallic option to no. Well, the texture matches the color scheme of my initial picture, and even if the pattern is not vertical as I wanted, I think the output is quite cool. With the next material I wanted to achieve a linear geometric pattern, so I took a picture of a checkered shirt I had lying around and used it as a source image in the Use Your Swatch panel. I tried to use it as it was, by playing a bit with the seamless tool, but the lines weren't aligning well, so I corrected the starting picture a bit, removing the distortion introduced by camera lenses and perspective. When reporting the image in Fabricator, I managed to create an almost perfectly seamless texture by reducing the tile area. After the upscaling to 2K resolution and the PBR maps generation, we see the final result. Actually, it's quite good. The only problem is that colors are somewhat washed out, but with some editing of the downloaded final texture in Photoshop or a similar software, you can fix that. At the beginning of this video, I said that this software is still in beta. That means that it's currently under development. In fact, while I was making this video, the Vmod team released a couple of improvements. The first one is the output set number, or seed number. You can see just before the prompt in the Generate Swatches option of the custom mode. That number indicates the randomness used by the model to generate your images. And it will always change by default. But if you get some results that are close to what you are looking for and you want to try to generate again, you can use the same output set number to make the model know that things should change a bit, but the starting point is the same. The second improvement is on the model itself. Recently the Vmod team released a new version of the AI model that generates higher quality results than before. Here you can see the futuristic cyberpunk or whatever pattern I generated before, but created after the new model release. Note that to make this test faster, the prompt used was the same, but I was in quick mode. That automates the seamless phase and directly generates one set of PBR maps, metallic included. In my opinion, this version looks way cooler than the first one. Here I've mixed the metalness map, sheen and thin film shader settings to achieve this kind of effect. I guess that in a game would look quite amazing. Here is an alternative version of the Leopard pattern instead, same prompt we saw before, but generated in quick mode and after the new model release. In this version we can see an evident Fourier effect, colors are a little too light, looks more like a snow leopard than a regular one, but the final texture is very nice. That's all guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you want to see more about this let me know in the comments. And remember to use the link in the description to sign up and get 1500 free beta credits to use in Fabricator. Cheers!